Rowan here. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome if this is your first time or welcome back if you've been here before. Uh, let's talk about my top tarot trumps. This is going to be a VR to Musings by Masha. Uh, this is a video where I discuss my five favorite cards from the tarot major arcana so today i'm going to be talking about the fool and in the future i will talk about the magician and then the high priestess and so on and so forth etc uh so i've got my handy dandy tarot notebook here uh this is my study book for tarot uh, uh so let's get into it uh so my first card that we're going to talk about of course is the fool uh, let's turn through. I've got my Kabbalah Quick Guide, the Major Arcana. All right, so we have the Fool card. Uh, the Fool, also known as the Spirit of Aether or the Madman. Uh, this card is associated with air and with um, Mercury. Excuse me, with Mercury. Uh, this card is... Uh, well, here's some of my keywords for it. Uh, we've got uh, my primary keywords that came out of my little noggin. Beginner, look before you leap or don't. Boldly going, acting rashly. Querent or seeker, the call to adventure. Existing outside the action. Potential, a choice, how to begin, where to go. Uh, and then some keywords that I took from books and um, guidebooks, as well as uh, some more that came from my head as I was reading books and guidebooks, and then some comparisons. So we've got folly, naivete, new beginnings, innocence, spontaneity, reckless, distracted, hesitation, bold, leap of faith, good humor, eccentricity, gullibility, curiosity, living moment to moment, compare the two of swords, decisions without all the info or the two of wands planning for goals compared to the knight of wands impulsive or all of the aces each bringing their own specifications vanity foolishness indiscretion inanity incomprehensible actions impulsiveness foolishness obsession open-minded fresh experience youth or youthful attitude ad libitum without expectation wanderer instinctual trust and vacuum. Vacuum is really interesting um, as it primarily implies a uh, unstable state of nothingness that will collapse in on itself. Love that. Love that a lot. So let's talk about some of my favorite full cards. Uh, all right. So um, obviously, ooh, let's not spoil the surprise. Boop, 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 boop. Sorry about that, y'all. I probably should have planned this better. So obviously we've got uh, here in my tarot notebook, we've got representations of the Tarot de Marseille, uh, the Rider Waite Smith Tarot, and then the Thoth. But my favorites go next. And these are not necessarily in any kind of order. I did not order these, so it's not my top five countdown. It's just my top five. Uh, so we've got the Zeke's Arcana Fool. This is one of my favorite Fool cards because of the way it illustrates the lack of preparedness. So this Fool we see here is not dressed for the occasion. Uh, in a leotard with one leg of gaucho, we've got some uh, very spiky tits, maybe one of the only things on our fool's uh, body that might lend itself to the journey ahead. Uh, but they are wielding a rose covered in uh, thorns, thorns still, indicating that they have not properly honed their staff uh, for the journey ahead. They have not carved it in any way. It's still got the thorns which will harm them on it. Um, but also maybe those thorns might be effective for keeping other people from grabbing hold of their uh, rose staff. So it's beneficial at the same time as it being a hindrance. They have a tiny little bag, absolutely useless for holding everything that's necessary. And they're wearing two different shoes, indicating a rush out the door onto their journey, or perhaps even just a lack of forethought or planning. I love this fool card. I thoroughly enjoy it. Oh, also the star head to me really symbolizes the way they're, um, they've got their head in the clouds. 
uh, or the way their thoughts are going a million different directions and they don't really have the path set before them. They're just going out and acting. Mm -hmm. um, really love this fool card. Uh, this one is just a Rider Waite Smith clone. This is from the Modern Witch Tarot. I still thoroughly love it. I love the twist on the traditional fool. We've got ourselves a little fashionista who's a little bit lost to the decades. She wanders aimlessly listening to her music, perhaps dancing a little. It looks like her dog is howling along with her. She's a blue-haired beauty who is just too busy frolicking through the world to notice that she's about to run off a cliff. I mean, there's not much more to say than that. Um, it's just a really straight full, straightforward full card. I do love the cityscape in the background. That's a nice touch. Um, but yeah, love this one from the Modern Witch Tarot. Then we have the potential card. This one is taken from the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot by Liz Silverman, I believe her name is. Uh, I like this one for its renaming of the fool to potential. The imagery is fine. I don't I mean, it doesn't do anything great for me. Um, we've got our goddess here in a field. Uh, she wanders very close with one foot dangling off the edge. Her cat or um, mountain lion companion is not necessarily doing a good job of stopping her, but does seem to be alert to the danger before she is. Um, it's just... The, the imagery is not what I'm here for. It's the renaming potential. Um, I just think that's one of the best renamings for the Fool card. It's one of my favorite keywords for the Fool. Then we have the Fool card from the uh, Antique Anatomy Tarot. Uh, this one shows the interior anatomy of the ankle and the calves specifically with a little bit of the knee as well. You don't really get the toes. It's all about the ankle, the calf, and the knee. Um, or the shin, truly, not even the calf, the shin. So you get the expression of impulse through these um, anatomical structures. You get a little bit of the interior of the, uh, like, the tendons. And are there veins in there? Not necessarily, but you do definitely see muscles. So, like, it, it definitely implies... Um, action flowing through the foot to step forward. Plus, then you get the primary colors in the flowers. You get your yellow, your red, and your blue. And it, don't talk to me about cyan, yellow, magenta. I know, I know. For the purposes of discussing this deck, though, we're going to go with the yellow, the red, and the blue. Um, did I say cyan, purple, magenta? Never, you know what I mean. Um, this card is just a really good rethinking of the symbolism of the Fool, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And finally, we have my fifth favorite, or, well, not necessarily. I mean, I guess technically this one is my fifth favorite because it has not yet made it into my notebook, but it will once I have three other cards to pair with it. Uh, or really only two other cards because there's a number six that I have chosen, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this one is taken from the... Um, Somnia Tarot, uh, and this depicts a gentleman slowly trudging his way out of a door frame. He's holding in his hands a book as if it holds the secrets to the path ahead of him, and then a pair of scissors. He has tied to himself his bed as well as an anvil. Uh, obviously, judging by the scissors, he is perfectly capable of cutting himself loose of that which slows him down, but he he doesn't, implying that he views these items as necessary to his journey. He is a fool. He is laden. He is over-encumbered with um, worldly goods that he thinks are necessary, and he's wrong. He's just wrong. Uh, so... Those are my top five favorite Fool cards, uh, as well as my information or my um, tarot analyses about the Fool at this time. Uh, I do expect this to grow in the near future as I am beginning a Thoth study. But yeah, uh, there is the Fool. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget to like if you liked this video, comment your own favorite Fools, and subscribe if you want to see more. Mwah! I love you. Bye.